Okay, day two of biomes. We're on page 273, taiga and tundra. So on your notes, taiga and tundra. The taiga is another forest biome. Forest. It has long, severe winters and short, cool summers. Long, severe winter, zoop, short, cool summer. Notice that's indented so we can see that it all goes together. Temperatures may reach 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, during only one to three months each year. The taiga is fairly dry, each year receiving only about 50 centimeters or 20 inches of precipitation, mostly a snow. Pretty dry, zoop, mostly snow. The most common trees in the taiga forest are conifers, such as pines, firs, and spruces. The leaves of these trees are thin, waxy needles that help reduce water loss. Conifers equal thin, zoop, waxy needles, indented, reduce water loss. That way we know those things go together. The needles may stay attached to the tree all year long. Animals of the taiga include moose, deer, and wolves. As harsh as the taiga can be, it is mild compared to the tundra. Mild versus tundra. The tundra is Earth's coldest biome, having an average winter temperature of negative 30 to 4 degrees Celsius, around negative 29 degrees Fahrenheit. So, got to go on to the next page. Tundra equals coldest, zoop, negative 29 degrees Fahrenheit. The ground is frozen for hundreds of meters down. The lower layers stay frozen all year long. This frozen ground is called permafrost because it is permanently frosted, permafrost. Ground frozen equals permafrost. In summer, temperatures hover just under 10 degrees Celsius, or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. As the upper layer of ground thaws, the tundra becomes swampy and covered with mosses, lichens, and grasses, and other small plants. Mosquitoes thrive in the short summer. So, summer, arrow, melts, Arrow, swampy. Mosquitoes thrive. Other tundra animals include polar bears, wolves, caribou, and reindeer. These animals have adaptations that help them survive in this cold biome. Polar bears, for example, have a thick layer of fat to keep them warm. Polar animals. Okay, turning the page. Ocean biome. Recall that water covers almost three-quarters of Earth's sur surface. Ocean biome, water, squiggle, three-fourths, or three-quarters, parentheses, 75%, Earth's surface. These are, there are two basic water biomes, freshwater biomes and saltwater biomes. Freshwater, saltwater. Saltwater biomes include the ocean biome. Ocean. As in land biomes, the ocean biome depends on plants and algae. Plants. Large green kelp is found in this biome. However, most food in the world's oceans comes from tiny algae and plankton near the surface. Algae and plankton. Different areas or zones of the ocean are home to organisms suited to particular conditions. The intertidal zone is the zone closest to land. Intertidal, closest to land. Depending on tides and waves, this zone is either covered with water or exposed to air. Water, arrow, water, air, arrows facing both ways because it can be underwater or it can be in air. Those are the tide zones or the tide pools, basically. The beach. Organisms that live in the intertidal zone are adapted to crashing waves. Barnacles, for example, cling tightly to rocks. Adapt to crashing waves. Beyond this zone is the neritic zone. Okay, up here in the picture you can see here's the intertidal, up here by the land. Here's the neritic zone, kind of in the middle. And then out here is going to be the oceanic. Here, waters are usually shallow and rich in nutrients. Neritic, shallow, zoop, rich nutrients. 
Practice saying these words, neritic, shallow, rich nutrients. The zone is home to tiny algae, crabs, shrimp, mussels, sea stars, sea urchins, and many fish. Notice most of those are like pretty small creatures, right? So lots of small but high numbers creatures. Uh, the open sea is called the oceanic zone. Oceanic, open sea. Its top layer receives the most sunlight and contains the most life. The deepest parts receive very little sunlight. These areas contain life forms that are adapted to dark, cold water and extreme pressure. So life depends on sunlight versus depth. So the deeper you go, the less sunlight there is, or the shallower you are, the more sunlight there is. Life depends on sunlight, and the sunlight depends on how deep you are. Adapt to dark, zoop, cold, zoop, pressure. All right, let's do our lesson wrap up. So this is phase two, highlighting and annotating. Phase two is called processing. We process our notes to find the key details that will support the main idea. Okay, biomes are regions with specific climates and types of organisms. Biomes, vocabulary term. Okay, this was the section with biomes, six major land biomes. There was the picture on page 270 of all six biomes and their names. Okay. Climates and organisms. Climate plus organisms. Organisms have adaptations that make them well suited for the biome in which they live. Adaptation. Adapt to survive. Okay. So, front page, adaptation, biome, biomes, and all those right there. Nothing on these pages. We're going to go all the way over here because the ocean biome contains several different zones. So, ocean biome, and highlight the names of those three zones. Say them, intertidal, neritic, oceanic. Organisms in each zone are adapted to the available sunlight and other conditions. So adapt to crashing waves, sunlight, adapt to dark, cold pressure. Right, they're adapting to the sunlight and the other conditions. Sunlight, other conditions, other conditions. Okay, now let's do it in just our brain using the main idea. Earth has six large land biomes. Each biome's climate determines what types of ecosystems may be found in the biome. Okay, what is really important in the main idea? Six biomes, six large land biomes, climate, and ecosystems. Let's look for those things in our notes. Okay, we highlighted here the six major land biomes. Star it. Climate and organisms. A biome is made up of a climate and organisms that adapt to survive, star. Okay, well, what are those six major land biomes? Oh, tropical rainforests, temperate forests, grasslands, deserts, taiga, and tundra. So stars, stars, stars next to those pairs. Okay. Then, how would we describe each? but do it in like a really, really short way, like one sentence or just a few words. Tropical rainforests, rainy and hot, star. Temperate forests, have all four seasons, star. Grasslands, well, the name says grasslands, so we don't need to worry about grass, but few trees and a dry season, star. Deserts, the driest biome of all, star. Taiga, long, severe winters and short, cool summers. It's a forest, star. Tundra, the ground is frozen, permafrost. It's the coldest, star. Okay, now those are the six major land ones. Now, we need to talk about the ocean biome, okay? 
even though they say the six large land ones and they talk about climate and ecosystems, obviously the ocean is important since it covers three quarters of the earth, 75%, that's a lot. So if we were going to talk about the ocean biome, we would name the three zones, intertidal, neritic, and oceanic. And then the big main thing here they talked about was available sunlight, right? Basically, the more sunlight, the more plants, and the more nutrients, and the more life. So the big thing out of the ocean biome, besides those three named zones, is sunlight. All right, now, skipping over the phase three, what you know in your brain, and you can connect to the notes here, how would we do our phase four summary? We would type out the main idea, and then we'd look for things that we highlighted and starred. Now, six major land biomes, we already said that. But we would probably add a sentence that says, the six major land biomes are tropical rainforest, temperate forest, grassland, desert, taiga, and tundra. We'd probably name the six zones, right? And then, it says their climate determines their ecosystem. Well, we already have climate. We have climate starred, but the climate word's already there. What we do need to talk about is organisms adapting, right? So let's actually talk about the organisms adapting to their climate. Okay, so it's going to say something like, we say the main idea, and then we say the six major land biomes are these, and we list them. And then we'll do like a brief thing, like tropical rainforests are rainy and hot, ert. Temperate forests have all four seasons, ert. Grasslands have few trees and a dry season, ert. Deserts are the driest biome, ert. The taiga is a forest with long, severe winters, ert. And the tundra is the coldest biome with permanently frozen ground, ert. There you go six tiny short little sentences, which is really just three normal sentences. And then we would say, finally, the ocean biome has three zones, intertidal, neritic, and oceanic, and life adapts to conditions such as sunlight and depth, or something like that. Okay, so we don't duplicate the stuff that's already there in the main idea, but at some point we do name the six biomes, a very, very, very brief short description of each biome, and then we mention the ocean biomes having three zones and depending on sunlight. Okay, you're done with phase one, take notes. You're done with phase two, processing. We highlighted, we annotated, we found key details that support that main idea. Now it's time to create your e-binder upload your pictures, copy the main idea, do your phase three connecting, connect what's in your brain to what's on the paper, and then write your phase four summary. Good luck, persevere, have a growth mindset, and roar, you wildcats.